Hello, this is a little look at a level design project that I recently completed. It's the first level design project that I've ever done um, and it's a small Nordic dungeon that I created as part of my work with the Beyond Skyrim team. I've been working as a writer with them for a little while and I decided I wanted to try and um, broaden my skill set a little bit by doing some level design. So this is the first project that I have worked on. Um, it's based off the um, Skyrim Special Edition Creation Kit and is basically my interpretation of the tutorial from Bethesda for their level design sort of course, um, which is the starting point really for the Beyond Skyrim level design stuff. So this is my take on Loki's tomb, which is the 10 part um, tutorial. Anyway, it's basically a five room, well, four room dungeon with a cave at the end, which is obviously a larger structure. And it's um, a Nordic ruin and you're given the kind of nuts and bolts of how to do the basics in the tutorial documentation but how you lay out, design it and clutter it and everything is kind of left to your own interpretation. So um, this is the, obviously the, the, the top view. I'll turn the lights on. So here you can see the overall layout. So there's four rooms with the main cave space at the back. Um, all of this green stuff is webbing, spider webs. Um, so there's quite a lot of like markers here that you can um, have a look at. Obviously I've turned some of them, you can turn them off, turn them on. Um, I'll turn the sky off as well so you can see everything that I did here. So I started this basically from scratch um, with zero level design experience whatsoever. Um, I work as, well I say I work, I try and work <laughs> as um, mainly as a writer, a narrative designer. Um, but this I thought was a good kind of next step so that the things that I write about I could actually start to make. Um, so here's obviously where you come in. This is the main sort of first room and all these vines and everything I have placed that all by hand. Um, same for the spider webs which was kind of really tedious but <laughs> it turned out really nicely in the end. So if I just turn these lights off again. Whoop and put the sky back on. It does look quite dark and dingy when you zoom it out, but that's because of the um, lighting template that I've used. But when you actually go into the dungeon, you can see that it has quite a nice effect as a result. I'm really happy with how this turned out because it took quite a while to um, get, not necessarily get the lighting right, but it, it took quite a while to um, get the right atmosphere that I wanted for the experience. So obviously I put in some sound markers so that you can hear the wind whistling when you get to this part of the um, room. Here we've got um, a hole in the ceiling. These <laughs> were a bit of a work in progress. So these initial holes that you can see in the ruin are quite um, angular because it took me a little while to work with the kit pieces and make sure that they looked organic and the holes looked natural. I wanted the ruin to feel like somewhere that had obviously been there for a long time and that had had parts of the ceiling collapse in, which also would make sort of make sense for light to come through and illuminate parts of the dungeon so that it wasn't all totally um, candle lit. And that didn't really feel logically right because obviously um, it needed to be, you know, ne there needed to be some natural light to kind of mix things up a little bit really. Um, and also you can, what I found was a nice thing to, to do as well was to change the lighting based on the time of day. So I should be able to show you this. This is 10 o'clock in the morning. If you enter the dungeon, like through the daytime, you can see the sunshine through. As it gets later through the evening, the sunshine effect fades down. So you can see there, you get a stronger daylight sort of in the morning and obviously it gets darker in the night which is a bit more authentic really. Um, 
So yeah, this was the first part of the, the dungeon build, which I was quite happy with. It took me quite a while to get used to using this engine, the creation kit, which obviously is well over a decade old by now. But for me, as a beginner, I found this like a good stepping stone to like bring ideas to life, really. Um, obviously, I put sort of static items and everything and then put in these leveled items, which will appear based on your character's level. So this dagger, for example, um, will be a dagger that is suitable for a player of a specific level. Likewise with potions and books, they'll appear in the game, but because they're dummy items, you don't see them necessarily in the engine. Um, they're just there as markers, so you can turn the markers on or off. Um, but yeah, I was quite happy with how this first room turned out. It took me a while to construct the entire shell. I started it, like the back end of last year, and then life got in the way, so then I came back to it again. Um, and I think all in all, the entire structure kind of took me about four weeks on and off to build. I wasn't exactly doing it full time, but pretty much, you know, over the course of a few weeks, I managed to put all this together and test it out, make sure it worked, which, you know, takes longer than you think. And also, you know, all the little tiny details that you might not necessarily think take a long time, but really do, like these little tiny webs, for example, putting them in the nooks and crannies and, um, you know, things like little candle lights and vines and making sure the vines look realistic and not just kind of plonked in place. Um, and some of these items, like for example, this, some of these will like fall to the ground when you get inside. Um, so yeah, things like that take a bit longer than you would realize. But anyway, let's move on. <laughs> so the next part of the dungeon is this corridor. I'm sorry, this is a really fiddly engine to whiz through navigation wise. So you can see all these green markers here. These are all spider webs. So I placed every single one of these by hand, which took quite a long time. Um, this is quite an interesting little mechanic here. This um, Battenberg, as I like to call it, this sort of Battenberg trap. You walk through it and some dust will fall from the ceiling. That's quite cool. Um, I had to get to know what all of these pieces were, so once I'd clicked all of the parts together, it's a bit like a jigsaw, so once I'd learned how to click all the parts together in the right place, I then had to kind of cover up any seams or gaps with rubble and vines and things like that, so that took a while. Um, but it was useful because I got to see how you can um, make something that's essentially a kit look a bit more natural with your design choices. Um, okay, so then we come to the second room here, this kind of middle chamber. I'll turn these markers off because obviously you can't really see what, what's what. Um, I'll turn the lights down a bit for the atmosphere. So in here we've got like a fire pit and a central room with some smoke effects. They were quite fun to work with. This really cool gigantic head that's collapsed through and another ceiling hole. I found that ceiling halls were really um, <laughs> a bit of a labour of love to try and get right because obviously I didn't want them to look too sharp and pointy but here you can see if you look up through the ceiling hall in the sky I spent a lot of time looking up from the floor. Again you can adjust the time of day so that you can see what the effects are like in the middle of the night but I just thought it was a nice immersive thing to put in for the player. Um, to make sure they could still see a bit of the world outdoors. And also things like these rubble piles, making sure they weren't just like plonked flat on the floor and were sort of mm, like blended into the ground so that it looked a bit more realistic. That, you know, all these little things that you don't really think about but actually do take a lot of, a lot of time. Um, and little things like here, for example, I really wanted to have, so if you've got someone sitting in that throne, I really wanted to have like a, a light here in this little corner like a little candle just to illuminate these vines and leaves to make it a bit more atmospheric so all those details added to the time but I think it was time well spent to be honest um, rather than rushing it through I wanted to make it feel like a complete experience um, and one that you could believe people would be in because obviously in this level I managed to put some enemies in as well so this M here is actually um, 
a mage, a fire mage, and this fire mage will tool here and backwards and forwards to this enchanting table, doing enchanting until you can sneak up on him here through the corridor if you want to. But there is also an oil trap here. There's like some oil on the floor. So obviously if you're shooting fireballs at you and you get caught in the oil, this is gonna be that's gonna be a bad time. So yeah, just added environmental things that can make the player think a little bit. Um so from here we go down into the ruin a little bit further. This is another sound marker with some grumbling roam uh, dungeony sounds basically. Um we've got some more spider webs and some more vines. And then further down in this corridor, sorry I'm not the greatest with the navigation, we've got a trap here. So there's a trip wire and if you look up oh, there we go. I'll come round and swing it round a bit. If you look here we've got uh, a mace that'll kind of jump down and smash you in the face for having the audacity to come into this chamber. <laughs> and then we've got some more. This this room was a bit of a pain to be honest because um, I've put this kind of collapsed ceiling part here and there's like a collapsed ceiling part in the roof. It It's easier to explain this if you're looking at in-game footage so once I've done this I'll do a little video of actually walking around the dungeon so you can see what I'm talking about. But basically this whole room, um, there's another, there's a frost mage in here. But the story behind this room, and I found it really useful to think of each room as having a story of its own because that made the dungeon make sense. So like this was supposed to be like a prayer chamber almost, like a worship space. So there was four benches, one, two, three and four. Now these were, these two at the bottom here, they were originally intact. But when it came to nav meshing, which is a process that involves laying triangles on the floor so that your NPCs and characters can walk around everything. Um, when it came to doing that, it was not just like tedious, but also it didn't really make sense the way that I'd done it. So I kind of collapsed this part of the room so that it was a little bit more realistic. I mean, over the hundreds of years that this tomb has stood here, presumably parts of it will have fallen in or been ruined so it didn't really make sense to me that to have it perfectly laid out the way that I'd originally designed it and also if you look at the nav mesh I'll just show you so this is the nav mesh this red stuff it's basically like an invisible map that your NPCs whatever can operate around so that'll tell them where they can and can't walk um, but you've got a nav mesh around things like benches and static objects otherwise they'll just walk through them and that'll obviously look rubbish but it's quite hard to get the hang of doing because it's um, it's all done with triangles um, and I did it all by hand as well rather than using the auto nav mesh feature because um, it just works better to do it by hand apparently um, you end up fixing more mistakes than you would if you'd just done it by hand in the first place if you use the auto feature so I just went with the advice and did it by hand um, so yeah that took a while to nav mesh the entire dungeon like if you'll zoom obviously I've done the entire thing so that was another thing that added on the time in the process but I feel like it was worth obviously it was worth doing and I learned a lot from it so yeah there's this kind of hall of worship this was um, so to go back to the whole story of the dungeon this was like a, um, I want to say like a, like a practical room, like a, uh, like a room where they would make things and enchant things and you know keep warm basically. Um, this was obviously an entrance vestibule with like a, an altar to offer. Offer things to the dead because this is obviously a tomb at the end of the day. So originally it would have been a space to come in and, um, make an offering. So that's why there's urns and things in that room. And in here we've got like a celebration chamber almost with a throne and like a, I don't know. I kind of know what, <laughs> I know what I'm trying to say, but I'm not sure if I'm articulating it properly, but this was a, a multi-purpose space. And then in here we had the um, worship chamber slash prayer hall. And then further down we had another kind of um, make an offering kind of remember your dead sort of place but this is um, actually 
a medium level, mid level boss fight. So this M here is an enemy necromancer and this skeleton will follow her around. She's quite a, quite a hard fight. Um, but I'm really happy with how this room turned out in particular because of this handsome looking chap here. He is um, inanimate, he won't come to life, but he looks pretty cool sitting on his throne. So I'm quite happy with how he, he worked out. But this was another um, hole in the ceiling situation. Where is it? Um, oh, okay. there it is. So <laughs> I think this was the first hole in the ceiling that I actually did which is why it's quite small um, and it's also not the greatest of the holes but it's it does the job and I, I put some trees above so that you could kind of look up and get that sense that you were still underground which is why you know if you zoom out you can see these two random trees just kind of parked on top of the <laughs> on top of the dungeon um but oh there they go but yeah it makes sense if you're looking up from underneath you don't need to really like add too much more to it um, so where else do we need to go? Oh yes. So after those main rooms we can sort of make the transition into this hallway and turn the lights back off. So we activate this pole churn here and go through this sort of portcullis and then up these stairs which were a bit of a faff to get right I'll be honest but again worth doing because um, Clicking the pieces together is a bit of an art form in the creation kit and making sure there's no gaps in the floor and no gaps in the wall is also quite tricky. So there's parts where I've like laid extra boulders and things to cover things up, but it actually works quite nicely. So here we've got in this part of the hallway, there's a skeleton patrolling that you can kind of get in, into it with. But this part was probably the most challenging for me because I had to transition between the ruin space and the cave space and they were two very different bits of well two very different environments so when you kind of come into the chamber I'll just spin this around you can get a proper look at it in a minute sorry that's really spinny um, so coming in here I had to make this sort of seamlessly knit in with the cave which wasn't easy because obviously they're two totally different shapes um, so I used a lot of boulders to kind of patch holes in the ceiling and uh, holes where this bit transitioned into this bit and I tried to make it look as natural as I could um, but it took quite a bit of time to do that but I think it, it, it's worked out alright in the end um, I managed to add in some more vines and things to make it look realistic as realistic as I could uh, as well as some like flora mung, uh, mushrooms and things like that so lots of boulders here and um, we've got some spiders patrolling in this part of the cave lots of spider eggs because obviously I'd put spider webs throughout the ruins so I thought well we've got to have some spiders somewhere otherwise it just doesn't make sense so um, let me turn the lights off so you can get the the full view of what's going on here so this is where you come in I'm gonna have to do that spinny thing again I'm sorry yeah, there we go. So, done a bit too much spin. Okay, so yeah, you come in here and there's a bit of a step down. This cave floor um, was a real um, challenge to get right. Took a long time because obviously you've got the pieces that clip together, but this is like an organic kit, so there's a lot more room for gaps and mistakes. So there's a lot of dirt piles being used to fill things in. As I said, this is the first dungeon I've ever made, so it wasn't easy. Um, and I definitely took a lot more time over it to make sure that I, you know, got it right basically, or got it as close to right as I could get it. And there's definitely room for improvement, but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out for a first go. For example, the water, um, you can see this here. I tried to put some like puddles in the floor just to give it a bit more of a realistic feel and you can see that I don't know if you can see those drops those raindrops coming from the cave ceiling you probably can't see them there you go so I placed these vines all by hand which I'm really quite probably the most proud of to be honest because it took me ages to do but I think it looks really like realistic and then you've got some sort of drops of water coming through the top of the ruin uh, the ruined cave sort of part these are some spider corpses and then we've got these like really nice lighting effects which um, I had to practice getting those right but also 
I'm just going to draw the attention here to this hole in the ceiling because this is probably the hole in the ceiling that I um, spent the most amount of time on here. Ooh. It's really hard to get the zoom right. Here we go. Right, so if you look at this hole here, this kind of cave part, I placed every single one of these boulders by hand and rotated them all to make sure that this was all um, looking organic and real and looking like a real cave had collapsed because I wanted it to feel like if you looked up into the sky it wouldn't look like you were just looking at a random piece of um, cave kit that had been plonked down um, and so then I had the sunlight effect as well with the dust which I think adds a bit of atmosphere to it so the idea was to make it feel you know like a believable cave space so in here, this is meant to be kind of the remnants of the tomb and this is where the ancestral dead would be. Um, there's actually a few lootable items, quite a few lootable items around the dungeon that you can pick up soul gems and books and this, that and the other. Um, weapons as well that have been buried in with the dead. And then you've got these, um, there's a chest here that you can loot some stuff and these spiders obviously that'll patrol. So there's a couple of patrolling spiders couple of dead spiders because um, I want it to feel kind of cursed and then we've got some dead um, draugr and then here we've got our big final boss fight so this is quite a hard uh, encounter for the main event so to speak and then there's like a boss treasure chest there once you've downed the bad guy um, but yeah I think uh, if you look up at the ceiling you can see just <laughs> the sheer amount of vines and webs I um I kind of went to town a little bit with the webbing, but I just thought you know, if it's been there for hundreds of years, it should have plenty of, plenty of, webbing and all that sort of thing going on. So I'll just take the marks out again. So this is my completed version of Loki's tomb. It's I'm sure it's not perfect, but um for a first go, I'm pretty pleased with it and it can actually be loaded into the game and explored as a plugin although I haven't released it because well I've never released a plugin before I don't know how you do that so <laughs> so as soon as I learn how to do that that might be a next step but I will just quickly show you the overall layout again with everything that I put in and if you're interested I will do another video that is a walkthrough of the dungeon in game but yeah hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching